Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Arkham Horror. I'm gonna play another game straight on my channel right after the last one because I love this game, and also because uh, this is, uh, the, the old playthrough was basically like me testing my mod. This one is the release version. This is the one that's available, and it's much improved on the one I was playing before. And I want to show it off, and also I want to make sure it's working, because I haven't actually tested it by playing a proper game yet. So let's do it. So this time, what we're going to do is I'm going to play Tragic's base setup. So this is the setup that I use actually at home with my physical version when I'm playing Arkham Horror before I put any expansions in, okay? So what I do is I have the Arkham board, obviously. I use the Arkham gates. I use all the investigators, all 48 of them. There's only one investigator that doesn't work with just the base game, and that is... Uh, Sila. Yeah, this guy. Sila's ability is specifically related to aquatic movement. So unless you're playing with aquatic movement, he's actually not really worth playing because his other abilities are, are stuff. So let's just get rid of him. We're not going to put him in. And that's about it. So I've got all the investigators. I use all the great old ones. I use all the mass monsters and the monsters for the Arkham board only. Okay, I still only use the, uh, the monsters per expansion. And also I've only placed those ones into the game. Plus I use all the Mr. Matonic Horror Injury and Madness cards. I use the Mr. Matonic Horror Relationship cards. I use all the common items, all the spells, all the uniques, all the skills, as in across the entire official release, but I only use the allies from Dunwich, and I also use the Dunwich Arkham Horror locations. Now, the reason why I only use the Dunwich allies is that you can only ever have 11 allies in your ally deck, no matter what, no matter how many cards you have. I think there's like 40 or 35 ally cards or something. You can only use 11. That's why all the ally gain abilities say if the ally is available right and that's because the ally is a kind of timer it's linked in with the terror track there is actually a variant that a lot of people play where they divide the terror track numbers by uh how many allies so you might lose two allies a terror increase or three depending on how many you're using anyway whatever the point is i'm just using the dunwich horror allies as if I use Kingsport allies, for example, there are no cards that will ever be allow, ever allow you to draw them. You know, so they're just a waste. It means you can only get them from Mars Boarding House. So I'm just using the Dunwich ally, the Dunwich allies, and I've also got the Dunwich Horror, Arkham Horror location cards, which will just increase the thing. Now, because my mod is still in construction, there's a number of things that won't work. I mean, the game will work, but, um, you know, there's, there's like a spell that lets you draw like the Eternal Flame and stuff like that. And those cards actually aren't in the game yet. So when, when I play, if I draw something which isn't applicable, like it's not able to be done, then I'm just going to delete that card and then redraw. Okay, so let's build the pool. Your blammo. And what we're also going to do is, I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to take out the investigators that uh, we already used because we don't want to use them again. We're going to get fresh investigators. And I'm just going to do this each time I do a playthrough, you know, just so we have a bit more variety. Oh, Mandy Thomas, Mandy Thompson. Tell you what, she is so awesome. Being able to re-roll any investigator is just super, super good. I'm going to miss that one. So I've taken out the eight investigators that I used in the last playthrough. And we're ready to go. But you know actually what I will do? I think I'm also going to include the Mr. Matonic Horror 
uh, Mythos cards. These Mythos cards contain Gate Burst and a number of other little things. We'll just uh, play with everything in. So we'll add them as well. Okay. Uh, right. Okay, let's get rid of this chat window now. Now, we've got 19 old ones left. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just take out the one we played with, which was Yog Sothoth. We'll just get rid of him. Yablamo. Okay, and I'm going to do this randomly, but I'm going to reserve the right to change it if I don't like the glue I pick. <laughs> Boom. And it's Cthulhu. I actually quite like Cthulhu. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's just do this. Yablamo. And we're off. Okay. Nice. Uh, we've got a pretty decent selection of people here. Nice. Okay, let's have a quick look at Cthulhu himself. The sweltering heat. While Cthulhu stirs in his slumber, each investigator loses one stamina for each movement point over three he spends each turn. Reading tomes does not count towards the skull. In addition, all weather cards are ignored when drawn, a new card being drawn instead. So basically, Cthulhu is just like a gigantic sun. So it's just a heat wave, right? And it replaces all weather effects. So this is like a sweltering heat is a permanent weather effect. Now the worshippers of Cthulhu are actually five vampires and they gain plus two toughness and deal one extra stamina damage. So they're vampires, five vampires become super strong. And uh, that's about that. Okay. So what we're also going to do here is let's just roll for so he gets first player. I roll four die. What you got for us? Six, ten, fourteen. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yoink. Alright, now let's check out what we've got. First we have Angie Barker. The story so far. Agnes Barker may just be an unassuming waitress in this life, but in a previous life, she knows that she was a powerful witch. In a time and age undreamt of in the modern world, she forced spirits to obey her and destroyed her enemy with terrifying energies. She might have never known her previous incarnation had she not fallen from a ladder and hit her head while changing a light in the diner. But when she awoke in hospital, she whispered one word, Hyperborea. Even then, she would have dismissed her visions of the past as a simple hallucination if it wasn't for the fact that the spells she dreamed of were real. Trying one in secret, mortally embarrassed to be even attempting it, she was stunned to see it take effect. Since then, she has been nurturing her new powers in secret, extremely careful not to let anyone else find out. But as Agnes finishes her shift at the diners this evening, a whisper in the air warns her, something is coming. Something that destroyed her once before in an ancient past, and she must be prepared. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so she starts with Wither. Uh, she has some interesting abilities. Uh, her ability is, when Agnes casts a spell that provides a bonus to combat checks, that spell adds the number of hands it requires to its combat bonus. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll just draw the, the stuff. She starts with... One common, one unique, one spell, one skill. One common, one unique, one spell, one skill. Gets luck. Luck isn't the coolest of all. Uh, she's got Wither. Another spell. Ooh, nice light manuscript. And a safety deposit key. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So what that means is her ability. See how Wither has one hand? That means it's actually plus three for when you gain the check and then plus one for the hand. So if she casts a two-handed spell, it adds two to the casting, which is pretty strong. She also gained 
denying the Ancient One. Worshippers of the Ancient One lose any abilities granted to them by the Ancient One this turn. This is a very, very cool spell for some of the more powerful Ancient One cultists. And the Safe Deposit Key. This is uh, a pretty cool card. Uh, basically, you just uh, do a luck check at the bank and you get to nick off with someone's safe to deposit and get clues or unique items and stuff. Nice. She also has Blood is Power. When paying a spell's sanity cost, Agnes may spend stamina for part or all of the sanity cost on a one-for-one -one basis. So basically, she's like a blood witch. She can use her physicality to uh, instead of mana, so she can actually take health hits, which is pretty awesome. Okay, what have we got? Skidzo Tool. He starts with the axe. He also gets two commons, one unique and a skill. Wow, he got really good spells. Terrible skill though. Bam, look at that. This is one of the new uh, and one of the best magical weapons. It's plus four and it's one-handed and it's even plus five if your other hand's empty. And he got the Tommy gun. So he got very good weapons. And he got a task. So tasks are pretty interesting. Basically, you have to just run in order. You start at Mars Boarding House, and you go to River House, you go to Hibbs House, and then you complete the task, you gain the effect. Now, some of the tasks are very, very hard, and some of them, there's actually one task that actually lets you completely win the game. So, like, it defeats the Ancient One. So some of these tasks are really strong. Some of them are very hard to do. This is obviously a common task. So we'll see that in action. Basically, we've got to get him to Mars Boarding House because you actually have to do it in order. Okay, so let's have a look at him. Sure, Skids had knocked over a few banks before. They caught him, but they'd never killed anyone. Scared someone? Intimidated someone into handing over his possessions? Yeah, okay, he'd done that. But he wasn't a bad person. He was just desperate. When he told the cops that he needed the money for an operation for his mother, they just laughed. Apparently they'd heard that excuse once or twice before. His mother died of her illness during the second year of his sentence. After that, no one came to visit him. He managed to cling to his sanity by befriending his cellmate, a scrawny little guy named Brad Hollins. Brad was a weird guy. He would rant and rave in a quiet voice every evening about the old ones and tell Skids about bizarre adventures he's had while dreaming. Skids humored him until one night he woke up to hear Brad chanting strange words, still asleep. Smelling smoke, Skids turned to look at his cellmate just in time to see Brad scream and burst into flames. The screws had tried to pin it on him, but really there was no way they could get it to stick. Now finally out on parole, Skids finds himself staying in a place that Brad frequently mentioned in his ravings, the city of Arkham. Perhaps he can find some answers to the questions raised by his friend's death. Okay. So he is from the School of Hard Knocks. Once per skill check, Skids may roll two bonus dice for each one he rolled. He may do this either before or after spending clue tokens. So basically, when I do a skill check, if I roll ones, I get to do an extra two dice, which is really, really strong. And got criminal records. Skids cannot become the Deputy of Arkham, nor may he ever get a bank loan. That's pretty lame. Yorick. If all the world truly was a stage, then William Yorick felt he had a bit part at best. After studying for years to become a Shakespearean actor, he found that dramatic monologues didn't put bread on the table. So desperate for work, he had to accept a job as a grave digger. He figures that while grave digging was an unusual job, there wasn't really anything wrong with it. After all, one of Shakespeare's best scenes involved a grave digger. Sure, the work was hard and dirty, but William had never shied away from honest labour before. That, of course, was before the weird corpses began turning up. Strange and human things. They caused William's flesh to crawl and his palms to sweat. He began to see strangers watching him wherever he went, and he knew instinctively that taking the corpses to the university would be the last mistake he ever made. Which is why William finds himself in the pews at South Church. While he has never been a particularly religious man, he finds that Father Michael usually has good advice. Today, William feels like he could make all the difference in the world. Okay, so he has an unusual starting setup. He has two commons, he has two uniques, 
and he has three monster trophies, which is bizarre. Yoink. So he starts with a dead cultist. He starts with a dead shambler. And he starts with a dead ghoul. How unfortunate. It'd be really nice to get uh, three, uh, five toughness right at the start. Okay, he gets an uh, enchanted knife, and he gets a silver key, and he gets some whiskey, and he gets the manuscript. So he's got some pretty decent setups. Oops, I forgot to draw his skill. Yonk. Ah, library utes. When you make any lore check, add plus one to each die you roll for purposes of checking for successes. Pity he's not really a magic user. That is a magic user's skill. Okay, so his abilities are quite weird. William may spend his monster trophies as if they were clue tokens on a one-for-one -one basis. So he basically has three more clues, okay? Not a great use of them. Any phase. Each time William spends a monster trophy, he may decide to return it to the box instead of placing it in the monster cup. This ability is awesome. Because you can, when you when you bless people, you spend monster trophies. They go back in the cup, and then you can draw them again. And some of the monsters are really bad, especially when you start adding in the expansions. This guy can actually just get them out of the game. So he is a great monster hunter, and that's what we're going to be using him for. Nice. Okay. Young Rita, she gets a retainer. That's pretty cool. Growing up in the South, Rita has often had to fight discrimination in one form or another. Although her family was poor, she worked hard and received a scholarship to Miss Natonic University, where she joined the track and field team. Now she may have to fight for her life. Someone is after her. That much she's sure of. She has no idea who it is or why they want her, but there have been several strange men hanging around her dorm. Last week, her roommate was assaulted while wearing Rita's jacket, and Rita feels certain that it was the case of mistaken identity. Today, Rita spent several hours trying to convince the police to do something, but the sheriff says that his hands are tied without more evidence. Still, while running away might be the best way to avoid this premonition of personal doom hanging over her, that's never been Rita's style. Whether her stalkers are members of the Ku Klux Klan or something even more sinister, she's going to face them head on, the same way she's been facing the world all her life. Okay, so she's a track and field star. She has six speed, which is awesome. Okay, whenever Rita draws one or more injury or madness cards, she draws one extra card, then discards one of them, keeping the other. In addition, if Rita gains a duplicate of an injury or madness card she already has, the second one has no effect. So she is really resilient. So that's awesome. She gets two commons, one unique, and a skill. Give us a give her plus speed. Dope. <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay, she gets the lightning gun, which is a great weapon. This allows you to kill things in the sky. Okay, Daisy Walker. Books have always been the most important thing in Daisy's life. She started reading Tales of Horror at a young age, thrilling to the terror of Edgar Allan Poe, of Stoker's Dracula. She explored in fiction what she had hoard in life, horror, violence, feared. Then she stumbled across the John D. edition of the Necromonicon. It was macabre indeed. It was also blasphemous, unholy, and too awful to be real. Frankenstein and the Raven were forgotten. The chills that ran down Daisy's spines were not those of a forbidden pleasure. A new horror was born in her mind, a terror that such things could actually be. There were more books after that. The De Vermis Mysterious, The Cultist the Ghouls, each worse than the last. She read them all in a mounting panic. Could they be real? Could the things they spoke of be true? Now she knows it to be so. The thing that appeared in the library was something she read about in the Panope scripture. If the thing was real, then everything she'd read might be real. In which case, Daisy is the only one who knows how to stop it. Okay, so any phase, Daisy never loses sanity from reading a tome. 
Daisy's sanity cost to cast a spell is always reduced by one. What's great about this uh, Iron Will is that reduced by one, it doesn't say to a minimum of one, which means that any one cost spell doesn't cost any sanity. So she is awesome. We really want to get uh, a plus something, that, a skill that aids uh, spells, but she, we want to give her the tone. She's going to read all the tomes, not have any sanity loss for them, and then she can divvy out the information to other people. So she's a great, great character. Can't wait to use her. Okay, so we get one common, one unique, one spell, and one skill. Come on, be a good skill. Grapple. That's uh, not too good. Oh well, whatever. Chant weapon, not bad. Necromonicon, that's good. Ah, oh, and she gets two tomes to begin with. This is the one she starts with, and she gets the Necromonicon. Necromonicon is fantastic for her because it's uh, exhaust. You don't discard this. I mean, there's so much information in this, you can just keep reading it every turn. And remember, it says she never loses sanity from reading a tome. Not reduced, never. So if you pass, draw one spell and lose two sanity, boom, nothing. So she can use this every single turn and never lose sanity and just get spells every turn. That is awesome. George Barnaby. George Barnaby always had the need for control, control of his life and of his surroundings. That's why after spending a month in jail at the age of 19 for a crime he didn't commit, George became a lawyer. Possessing a keen mind and a charismatic personality, he found that he excelled in his chosen field and soon rose to a position of power and wealth. George enjoyed the challenge of practicing the law, and years rolled past in a pleasant blur until he was ready to retire. He figured that he and his wife Maria would buy a boat and sail around the world. That was before the night when his home was invaded, his wife was murdered and his house was burned to the ground by two men wearing strange emblems. Now he has tracked those men to the city of Arkham. They will pay for making him feel helpless and for taking away his dear sweet Maria. After all, if there's one thing lawyers are known for, it's collecting debts that are owed to them. Okay, I've never really liked his backstory because a really famous awesome lawyer would probably use the law to attack people. But whatever, let's get into it. Knowledge is power. When spending a clue token to add to a skill check, George may add plus one to the result of one of his rolled dice instead of rolling an extra dice. This is a bonkersly powerful effect. So basically it turns any die, any green die is basically blessed because fours will be fives. You know what I mean? So any, anything that requires a single success, like any skill check or any monster that requires a single success, he's permanently blessed. It's super strong. And when he's blessed, right, he actually has uh, threes are successes. So this is a super, super strong ability. And uh, he also may spend $2 to prevent any investigator from being arrested because he, he, he becomes a lawyer, which is awesome. And he also starts with a retainer. So we're gonna have a lot of money this round. He gets one common, one unique, one spell and one skill. Oh, he gets endurance, that's a good one. He gets the suggestion, the gate box and the rifle. Okay, so implant suggestion is really, really cool. Basically it allows you to move monsters this is a really strong spell for when uh, monsters get out of hand because you can create space to move your characters around. Very, very cool. And gate box we've seen that just uh, allows you to go, go to any gate. Now endurance, any phase after making any combat check, exhaust to add one success to the result. This card does not refresh unless you spend all of your focus to do so. So that is a quite an interesting uh, skill. Basically, it is a automatic success to a combat check. I mean, yeah, that is fantastic. Plus his other ability. I mean, he is going to be a strong hunter. I have to get him with some decent weapons. Okay. What have we got here? Michael Glenn. He's actually from the uh, corset. 
He starts with dynamite and the Tommy gun. As a soldier of the Abanning gang, Michael didn't really believe in all this voodoo mumbo jumble around town, or at least he didn't until the night of the foreman job when he saw fast Louis Farrell pulled screaming into the river by a scaly green creature. As they say, seeing is believing, and Michael is starting to believe. Now he has gathered his belongings together in the room that he rents at Ma's boarding house. Louis was a friend of his, and he won't rest until he finds out what's happening in this town and avenges his buddy. See, his adventure, his revenge story makes a lot more sense than George's, because, you know, <laughs> whatever. The point is, he starts with one unique and one skill. Ooh, okay. So... Minus one maximum sanity, exhaust instead of spending a clue token. Okay, so he actually starts with two sanity. That is horrendously bad. He does have a nice set of weapons though. He's got the enchanted blade, which is one of the better swords, but it's single-handed. He's got dynamite plus eight Tommy gun. So he's got good weapons. Any phase, Michael reduces all stamina losses he suffers by one to a minimum of zero. That minimum of zero uh, is what is missing off that other card. Uh, I forget which one it was now. Uh, Iron Will. That doesn't say minimum of zero. Okay. Akak. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm just going to call her a, a, a Chi. I'm just going to call her Chi. You blam. For as long as Chi can remember, she was trained to be the tribe's next shaman. Studying at the feet of the old shaman, she learned how to speak to the spirits, how to read the bones of the earth, and how to avoid the fell creatures that dwell in the dark places. Her education was supplemented by tutoring from an earnest young missionary. Her mentor allowed the man to teach her as long as she taught her English and other modern topics in addition to trying to convert her to Christianity. As for his religion, she was uninterested, for she had already learned many of the great secrets of lore and felt the power of the old ways. Recently, her old mentor called her to his bedside. His face was pale and gaunt. Chi, I have seen that a great trial is coming for you. You must go to the United States, to a city called Arkham. There you will have to face one of the old creatures, using the things I have taught you. Weeks later, as she opened the door to the old magic shop, she hopes that she can meet the challenge that lies ahead of her. Noice. Okay. Any phase, it costs Chi one less clue token to seal a gate. That's very handy. So she only needs four clue tokens. And Chi gains plus one bonus to all skill checks to close a seal a gate. In addition, she always seals gates regardless of game effects, which is very, very strong. Basically, she's just going to be our gate sealer. She can seal the gates, she has bonuses to sealing gates, and it doesn't cost her as much. Very, very cool. Okie dokie. Now she gets, uh, what does she get? She gets one unique item. She gets two spells. She gets one gate trophy, which is pretty bizarre. Oops, that's the wrong button, isn't it? Uh, Boop. She gets one gate trophy and she gets one skill. Beautiful. Law is exactly what we want. She starts with a gate trophy so she can bless turn one. Call a friend and heal and a tome. So call a friend is basically a teleport. We definitely will use this as a very good card. And heal, we know what that is. This uh, this time is really, really strong. It allows you to remove Doom tokens, or one Doom token, at the cost of a measly couple of sanity. But of course, we've got to give this to Daisy because she doesn't lose sanity, which is awesome. Okay, so that is all the guys, but we're not done yet. We are actually going to use relationships in this as well. I'm just going to shuffle the relationship deck and draw this. Okay. So I'm going to shuffle these again and redraw these cards because I've made a big error while I was doing this. So the way I'm going to, you can only have two people linked. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to link these guys. Then we're going to link these guys. Then we're going to link these guys. 
then we're going to link these guys. Okay. Blip. Fellow travelers, either you or your partner may exhaust this card to gain one extra movement point. Okay, that's not too bad. And blip. Practitioners of the art, whenever you or your partner cast a spell, either or both of you may contribute towards compaying the sanity cost. Either you or your partner may exhaust this card before making a spell check to gain plus one to the check. Okay, well that was terrible. That just doesn't help these two guys at all. Okay, and what do you get? Boom. Mystic Knights. Anytime either of you or your partner passes a spell check with two or more successes, the casting investigator may exhaust this card. If he does so, you and your partner each gain a sanity. Now that is more like it. And finally, your blunk. Friendly Rivals. Between you and your partner, the investigator with the fewest monster trophies gains plus one on combat check, and the investigator with the fewer gate trophies gets plus one on fight or law checks when closing gates. Beautiful. So that is a very, very handy one as well. Okay, so that's their relationships. So these two are related, these two are related, these two are related, and these two are related. And I'm also going to be doing the uh, the tasks as well. So we want Rita, Daisy, George, uh, what is it? Michael, she, Angus, Agnes, or whatever, uh, Skids, and Yorick. Okay, so these are personalized tasks that need to be performed. Okay. Hunting the Hunters. Pass. If Rita has three or more monster trophies, including at least one cultist, place justice is served in play. Failed. If Rita is knocked unconscious or driven insane, place leave me alone in play. So the way that works is over in here, you've got the results deck. So if I look up her Rita card for that, you've got leave me alone and justice is served. So these are just permanent effects that come into play. They become a new uh, power like on a player board. Okay, pass. If Daisy has six or more clue tokens, oh, that's going to be very easy to do. Excellent. If Daisy has no tomes, which she'll never do because she's got the Necromonicon, which does not get discarded. Beautiful. If George claims a cultist as a monster trophy, place My Sweet Mary in play. So basically he just needs to kill someone out of revenge. Skids probably has the same thing. If he has five or more monster trophies, he gets a pass. If she has three gate trophies, beautiful. If Agnes has three or more monster trophies. If Skids gains a clue token, put a clue token from the supply on this card. If there are five clue tokens on this card, he wins. Beautiful. Finally, if William is blessed, place heaven and earth in play. Okay, so that is the setup. And Cthulhu, I've already gone through. So now I'm just going to uh, just quickly set up their skill sliders. I'm not going to walk you through that because we're going to. I'll talk about it during their movement phase. Okay, so I've just done the uh, all, all the skill sliders. I'll talk you through them when I actually do my thing. And now let's draw the first Mythos card, which is an environment, but it is not a weather, it's a mystic. So Unvisited Isle gets a card. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of Add that. Two monsters. You can see the hotkeys of the new mod working. And moon and pluses move. There are no moon and pluses. Clue at the science building. And all undead monsters have their toughness increased by one. Nothing. But we do have a formless spawn, which is a bit of a nasty one. Okay. So that is that. And we are ready to go. <laughs> exciting i'm ready to do this so i will see you guys next time